choose our drum rack and underneath that is where we're going to choose our actual drum hit that's going to create the sidechain compression and I'll give you guys an example of that here so we'll click on the uh, house kick 01 right here and we don't have any effects on it so the pre and post effects don't really matter right now so I'll just do pre effects and um, I'll, I'll show you guys what the sidechain sounds like right now as I uh, bring the threshold up to make it kick in <laughs> So you can hear the kick drum every time it hits, the volume of the bass sound is lowering a little bit and it's adding a pretty interesting uh, sound to it. So I'm going to tweak it just a little bit more here and then we'll move on to the next section of the tutorial. <laughs> So that sounds pretty good. Um, one last thing we're going to do before we move on to the chords, uh, adding chords on top of this with uh, another synth sound, is I'm going to I'm going to activate a uh, MIDI controller here, and we're going to make it control the um, frequency and the, uh, the resonance here on Ableton's operator that we have playing our bass right now. So I'm going to click up on the MIDI um, the MIDI map mode switch here and we're going to double click on the frequency knob and then I'm going to just turn a knob on my keyboard and then the same thing with the resonance and this will activate the filter for us and I'll uncheck this MIDI map mode switch here since we've uh, activated these two knobs now so you can see when I turn them they're responding to the the knobs that I'm uh, moving back and forth and I'll change the filter to low 24 dB. It just gives you a little bit more control over the sound of the filter. So I'll play it back and you can hear what it sounds like when the filter is being tweaked with a little bit here. And you know what it sounds like? the uh, Even the output can be brought up a little bit more. So I'm going to bring this up to negative three. And we'll see how that sounds. Okay, so for the last step of this tutorial, we're going to add some chords over our song. And it's going to be pretty similar to the last uh, two steps we've done here. I'm going to start off by dragging another operator here. And again, that'll start another MIDI track. And we'll just input some chords here in the piano roll window. Once again, I'm going to activate the headphone switch here so I can preview the notes I'm inputting. And um, I'm going to input these notes here. And we'll just drag them all the way to the one three here, the halfway point of the one bar loop we have. And I'll copy this chord. And then we'll just make some minor adjustments to it. And so that's this is what these uh, two chords sound like together when they're played. So I'm going to add another preset to this MIDI information here on this channel and um, the operator preset we're going to use for this one is going to be the fast food lead under the rhythmic section here. So I'll double click this again and we'll hear what that sounds like. <laughs> So 
So again, I want to add uh, some side chain compression to this uh, these chords that I have here, this kind of lead chord section that we've thrown over it. So I'm going to go to the audio effects again here, and I'm going to drop a compressor on top of this. And just like before, we're going to open up the side chain section of the compressor, compressor and uh, we're going to hit the side chain button. And we're going to grab it from the same source that we have the bass side chain using, which is going to be the drum rack. And we're going to use the house kick to activate the side chain compression on this one, just as we did on the bass. So I'll play this back. And you can hear a lot of high frequency stuff going on there. And I kind of want to bring this back a little bit. And you could do that with volume, but I'm going to do it with the frequency knob on the uh, operator here real quick, real quick, so. And then we can also bring the volume down on that here in the mixer. Just a bit. Let's see how that sounds. That doesn't sound too bad. I might even add uh, another compressor here on the bass. Just see what that sounds like. I think that might be too much. I'm going to get rid of that compressor. We might just bring the threshold back a little bit on this side chain we have going on. That might help things a little bit. See, I'm kind of using the threshold here to blend the volume of the bass track that's going on, and that kind of helps to even things out a little bit. So just it helps to mess with the mix as much as you can and always come back the next day or a couple days after when you're writing a track and, and, and double double check your work just to make sure that the mix still sounds good. Um, it's kind of a technique that I've heard a lot of people use and it seems to help a lot. So I think uh, that about does it for this um, track here. I'm going to play it again and um, like I said, it's you can always map the frequency knob and the resonance knob for these presets to kind of just get a cool sound out of them. Um, you can tweak other settings on the operator if you want. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that stuff, but feel free to mess with any of these settings and uh, have fun. Yeah.